What I thought I would do is a little value study and a little eye study here. So um, I painted, I, I drew out this eye and I painted it in a value painting. And uh, you could do this in, with pencil, you could do it with charcoal, you do it with anything you want, but I like to do a little value study with paint because it's, it's easy and quick and I like to work kind of quickly sometimes. And it, it gives me a great little study to work from when I do my color. And so what I'm gonna paint here is, um, is this eye using my, a color palette of just three colors, a light, what I would consider a light color, a light value color, a medium value color, and a dark value color. And um, if you've ever seen my work, you um, can see that I like to paint in color values. And uh, I like to kind of assign my values to a color. So um, I want to show here that whatever colors that you use, if you get the value right, then it's going to read as an eye. So um, it really doesn't even matter as long as you have a color that kind of fits your your value. So anyway, let's get started. And I'm going to look for the the light values, the middle values, and the dark values in this in this little study here. And I'm going to start with my um, I'm, the colors I'm using are Quin Gold. This is um, Quin Rose, and this is an ultramarine blue. So um, so like I said, this is the Quin Gold is my light color value. The Quin Rose is my middle color value. And the uh, ultramarine blue is my dark color value. So we can start in where we see some light value here. And um, it doesn't matter if you take your light value into your middle or dark value areas because you can paint over those areas with another color and uh, those colors will, will blend and you'll have the, uh, the value that you need. So if I were to layer even where I've painted already, if I were to layer this blue in here, it's going to start reading as my darker value just because that blue is coming in. So I'm just um, just very generally finding my values and just following along color-wise. I'm going to put this middle value here where the inner area of the eye socket is. Let's come in with some darker value here. The paper that I'm painting on here is uh, hot press. That's why it's very smooth, not much texture to it and the color just runs, I love it. And this is what I do my portraits on. I, I teach a workshop called Faces and Figures. And um, this is really the uh, technique that I use. Some more light value down here. One, another, um, besides letting the paint run, uh, this paper has another good um, characteristic is, um, and that is that because I'm working more upright, the color flows, therefore the paper dries a little bit quicker. It's not dry all the way, but it's dry enough that I can come back in and my color will be okay. A 
It's very forgiving in that way. I don't have to stop and dry it with a hair dryer. That's no fun. Okay. And my shapes are um, very fluid, and I like that. So I'm going to come back in with a little bit of darker value. I'm using a little more straight pigment, a little less water, as I come into these areas that are darker. Hello. My iPad just talked to me. Hmm. Pretty scary. Okay into the pupil area here. A pupil, or um, an iris, which is this part of the eye, often has, especially when you're talking about a light colored iris, it has this darker line that outlines it. Even we who have brown eyes have that outline, but oftentimes um, the eye, the iris color is so dark you really can't see that. But if you take little opportunities to um, find subtleties in color in the uh, iris, it really can bring more life into your eyeball. So lid there. More of this mid-tone. Now my paper is pretty wet. But that's okay. Going in with a little bit more pigment, a little less water here. We'll um, bring out those darks. Okay, what I might do is let this dry and then come back in a few minutes and we can kind of polish it off and put the finishing touches on. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, welcome back. Uh, it's just a few minutes later, so it's not completely dry, but... Um, dry enough that these neat things have happened like this here and these little areas that um, kind of happened on their own so that's nice so I'm just gonna really um, zero in on a couple of darks areas here I like what's some of the things that are happening so I'm gonna try to leave some of this spontaneous stuff This is the other side of the iris over here. Now I'm mixing 
my color a little bit more. Um, just then I mix some, uh, some of the blue and the red to make a different dark. And I'm just gonna intensify a few more places and call it done. There's uh, dark shapes over here because that's the edge of the eyebrows. When you're looking straight on at an eye, you're not gonna see these eyebrows that go up like this. They're most likely gonna come toward you more. So it's gonna end up just being kind of a darker shape. Also, here's another thing about an eyeball um, is that the eye lid is always gonna cast a shadow onto the eyeball. So oftentimes then, often, um, you're going to have this dark shape going across the eyeball, across the top of the eyeball, and you may well too have that connection into the pupil from the, from the shadow that's above, or that's right below the eye brow or I sorry I lid onto the eyeball you're gonna have that shadow and it's gonna to connect to the dark of the um, pupil okay and that's about it oh, one more thing here the lid has a little fold here, so. A little more shadow from that lid up into the, let's just pretend the eyebrow is up here. Okay. So really, you can use any colors. And if you get the value of the color accurate, then you can make it read. You have your light value, your middle value, and your dark value. All right, well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. Happy painting. Bye-bye.